أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني آدم قد أن عليكم لباسا يواري قد أنزلنا عليكم لباسا يواري سوءاتكم وريشا وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَذَّكَّرُونَ I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. O children of Adam, we have indeed sent down to you raiment to cover your shame and to be an elegant dress. But the raiment of righteousness, that is the best, that is one of the signs of Allah that they may remember. For the seventh lesson of the multidimensional Quran class, we will be covering Surah Al Araf, which is the seventh chapter of the Holy Quran. The meaning of Al Araf is the elevations, or anything which is elevated. This surah is the first among the Quranic surahs in which the life stories of the prophets have been dealt with at some length. It has been given the name Al-A'raf in consideration of the very high spiritual station of God's messengers. Therefore, Al-A'raf refers to the prophets of God who will occupy a very high spiritual station on the Day of Judgment. This surah consists of 207 verses including Bismillah. It ends with a prostration, Sajda, which is the first of the 15 prostrations in the Holy Quran. It was revealed about the same time as Surah Al-Anam, which is the last year of the Holy Prophet Wasallam's life at Mecca. The following words have been used most in this surah compared to any other surah. The word Qariya has been used 10 times. The word Ummah has been used 8 times. The word Mala has been used 9 times. Hazrat Adam has been mentioned seven times and Hazrat Moses has, me has been mentioned the most in this surah compared to any other surah. And the words derived from the root ra ba ba have been used 65 times, which is more than any other surah in the Holy Quran. The surah starts off with calling people to the message of the Holy Prophet and to God Almighty. Then continues with the story of Adam salam and Eve salam and Satan. After that, divine guidelines have been given to the children of Adam, which is a very common phrase used in the surah. Then it goes on to tell the stories of various prophets. After that, it speaks about the covenant with Allah and the denial of his message. And at the end, Allah Almighty addresses the Holy Prophet ﷺ for various commandments. To summarize this surah, 
it starts with an invitation to the people of the book which are the Jews and the Christians to accept Islam when he continues with the story of Hazrat Adam -Islam and Satan then as mentioned before commandments have been given referring to the children of Adam after that commandments have been given to the children of Adam then commandments to the believers that they should wear decent and proper dress and eat pure and good food then dialogue between the dwellers of paradise the inmates of hell and the people of Araf after that the stories of the prophets are mentioned it starts with the prophet Noah salam. his people were punished by the flood for not believing in God Almighty and not accepting him as a messenger then it continues to Hazrat Hud salam, who was sent to the people of Ad and they also disbelieved then Hazrat Salih salam, who was sent to the people of Thamud then Hazrat Lot salam, is mentioned his people used to commit the sin of homosexuality and were punished severely for that Hazrat Shu'ib salam, he was sent to the Ashab al -Aqa. Then Hazrat Moses salam's story is mentioned at length. He was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Then he saved the Jews from slavery. He defeated Pharaoh's magicians and was given the Ten Commandments. And alongside him, Hazrat Aaron salam, who was the brother of Moses, is mentioned. Towards the end, the advent of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was prophesied in the Torah and the Gospels. Then the Holy Prophet wasalam, is sent to all of mankind. Prophets were only sent to certain nations before that. Then it speaks about Allah Almighty having the knowledge of the hour, i.e. the day of judgment. Then there are some commandments to show forgiveness, speak for justice and avoid the ignorant. Commandment about listening to the recitation of the Quran with complete silence. And the last verse is about the glorification of Allah Almighty, which ends with a sajdai tilawat. Now we will look at some significant verses from this surah. The first one, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ لَمْ يَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And we did create you, and then we gave you shape. Then said we to the angels, Submit to Adam. And they all submitted, but Iblis did not. He would not be of those who submit. This verse refers to the creation of Hazrat Adam salam, when Allah Almighty commanded all angels to bow to his creation. Iblis, i.e. Satan, refused out of ignorance and pride, saying that I am made of fire, I will not bow to someone who was created with mud is inferior to me. Next verse Qala fiha tahyawna wa fiha tamutuna wa minha tukhrajun. He said therein shall you live and therein shall you die and therefrom shall you be brought forth. This verse is a proof of the death of Jesus as Allah Almighty states that no one will leave this earth except that he dies in it. Ya bani adama khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjidin وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ O children of Adam, look to your adornment at every time and place of worship, and eat and drink, but exceed not the bounds. Surely he does not love those who exceed the bounds. Another verse, يَا بَنِي آدَمَا إِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ رُسُولٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَقُصُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِي فَمَنِ اتَّقَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ O children of Adam, if messengers come to you from among yourselves, rehearsing my signs unto you, then whoso shall fear God and do good deeds, on them shall come no fear, nor shall they grieve. فَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And when the Qur'an is recited, give ear to it and keep silence, that you may be shown mercy now we will look at some prayers from this surah 
ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves and if thou forgive us not and have not mercy on us we shall surely be of the lost This was a prayer of Hazrat Adam a.s. ربنا لا تجعلنا مع القوم الظالمين Our Lord, put us not with the unjust people ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وأنت خير الفاتحين Our Lord, decide thou between us and between our people with truth and thou art the best of those who decide ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وتوفنا مسلمين Our Lord, pour forth upon us steadfastness and cause us to die resigned unto thee رب اغفر لي ولأخي وأدخلنا في رحمتك وأنت أرحم الراحمين My Lord, forgive me and my brother and admit us to thy mercy and thou art the most merciful of those who show mercy أنت ولينا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الغافرين Thou art our protector, forgive us then and have mercy on us for thou art the best of those who forgive. وَاكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّا هُدْنَا إِلَيْكَ And ordain for us good in this world, as we... And ordain for us good in this world, as well as in the next, we have turned to thee with repentance. جزاكم الله أسنى الجزاء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In today's class we are going to revise the rules of recitation contained in verse 27 of chapter 7 يا بني آدم قد أنزلنا عليكم لباسا يواري لباسا يواري سوءاتكم وريشا ولباس التقوى ذلك خير ذلك من آيات الله لعلهم يذكرون Following the set format of this class, the rules of station in this verse will be covered in points. The first point we will focus today is related to two broad categories of extended elongation. First is al maddu sagheer medium long elongation. Second is al maddu kabir extra long elongation. Normally, constants letters are prolonged when they follow letters of prolongation for about two seconds or two counts. Sometimes this sound is stretched further according to the rules as I mentioned there are two broad categories of extended elongation one is Madun Sagheer medium long elongation which has been used on top of Ya in Ya Bani and it will be prolonged three to five counts second is Madul Kabir extra long elongation which will be prolonged four to six counts. For example, Alif Lam And second example, which you can see on your screen, is Qaf. Next rule is 
Madulin, soft elongation. In simple words, lean means to ease or to soften. There are two letters which are called haruful lean, which means letter of ease, which is ya and vow. In the rules of station, if vow and ya has sakoon on it, and the word before that bears the stroke of patha, it will be pronounced applying the rule of soft elongation. Au and ai. It shouldn't be au or ai. The correct way of pronunciation is au and ai. And in this verse, they will be recited like this, as you can see on your screen in the green color. Alaikum Sawatikum Khairun. It shouldn't be the case that we are reciting like this Alaikum Saw or Khairun. It should be pronounced properly Sawatikum Alaikum Khairun with soft elongation and a round voice. So the next rule is Idgham and Naqis, which means partial merging with two seconds of Ghunna or nasal sound. If Ya or Wa Mushaddad comes after Noon Sakin or Tanween, there will be a simulation or Idgham of both words and there will be two second nasal sound during simulation. One important rule is to remember that only one stroke of Tanween letter will be used during assimilation. For example, Libasayuari or Tabsiratan Wadikara Wahabba. The next rule we will learn is the difference between Ba, Zal and Za, similar sounding letters. The correct way of pronunciation is that when the tip of tongue touches the edge of upper two front teeth, the letter Zal and Ba are pronounced. Zal will be pronounced with Tarkik. Thin, like this, the, and second letter, ba, will be articulated with the thin, so it will be recited thick, ba, and the letter za will be pronounced by touching the tip of tongue on the edge of lower front two teeth, like this, za, simple. So zal will be recited thin. The and za will also be recited thin, as you can see here. Za thin, and the last one is ba. It will be recited thick. The last rule, which we will focus today, is alamatul waqt. Pause marks during tilawat. Even though there are many alamatul waqf and all have different rules, in this verse we have pa, al waqful mutlaku. Pa. Whenever there is a sign of pa, it is better to stop, but it is not compulsory. At the end, I will read the verse once again, trying to apply all the focused rules. Ya Bani Adam Qad Anzalna Alaykum Libasai
لباسیواری سوآتی کم وریشا ولباس تقوا ذلك خير ذلك من آيات الله لعلهم يذكرون جزاكم الله خيرا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In today's grammar segment, we will look at Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 27. You have already listened to the Tilawat and translation of this particular verse. There are three af'al or verbs which have been mentioned in this verse. Anzalna Yuwari and Yadhakkarun. In today's segment, we will look at the analysis of these verbs. Let's begin by looking at the first verb. Anzalna. The root letters of this verb are Nun, Za and Lam. The lexical meaning of this verb is He descended, He came down, He lodged or settled in a place. The mudare or aorist of this verb is yanzilu and the mustar or infinitive noun of this verb is nuzulu. The active participle or ism fa'il of this verb is munzilu. An example of this has been mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse 30. Wa anta khayrul munzilin, and thou art the best of those who bring men to land. The Object or ism maf'ul of this verb is munzalu. An example of this being used is anzalallahu kalamahu. Allah revealed his word. An example of this being used in the Holy Quran is anzala minas sama ima'an. He caused water to come down from the clouds. Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 23. When anzala is used for divine word. It means awha, or he revealed. An example of this is anzal Allahu alayka al-kitab. Allah has revealed to thee the book. Surah An-Nisa, chapter 5, verse 114. When anzala is used for material things such as food, iron, etc., it means he gave or he bestowed. An example of this is Anzalna alaykumul manna was salwa. He caused manna and salwa to descend upon you. Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 58. The analysis of this verb is as follows Fil mudare in the past tense, jam'un, it is plural, and mutakallim in the first person. Let's move on to the next verb, yuwari. The root letters of this fi'l or verb are waw, ra, and ya. The two af'al or verbs which are derived from this are wara and wara. The lexical meaning of this verb is he concealed. The mudare of the verb wara is yari. And the infinitive noun or mustard of this verb is wadiyan. The aorist of the Verb wara is yubari, and the master or infinitive noun of this verb is tawriyatun. An example of this verb being used in the Holy Quran is liyuriyahu kayfa yubari sawata akhi, that he might show him how to hide the corpse of his brother. Surah Al Maida, chapter 5, verse 32. And another example. Of this fail being used in the Holy Quran is ma ma anhuma min so that he might make known to them what was hidden from them of their shame. Surah Al-Araf, 
chapter 7, verse 21. Another example of this verb being used in the Holy Quran is Hatta Tawarat Bil Hijab when they were hidden behind the veil. Surah Saad, chapter 38, verse 33. The analysis of this verb is as follows it is fil mudari, it is the aorist tense, which means it is present and or future, mudakkar, it is masculine, wahid, singular, and ghaib. In the third person. Let's look at the next verb. Yadhakkarun. The root letters of this verb are dhal, kaf, and ra. This has come 292 times in the Holy Quran in 14 different forms. The lexical meaning of this verb is he remembered, he recollected, he preserved in his memory. The mudari or aorist of this verb is yathkuru. The infinitive nouns or mustar of this verb are dhikra, dhikrun, dhathkaru. An example of this verb being used in the Holy Quran is wathkur fil kitabi maryam and relate the story of Mary as mentioned in the book. Another example of this verb being used in the Holy Quran is يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقِعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Those who remember Allah while standing, sitting and lying on their sides. The active participle or ism fa'il of this verb is ذَاكِرٌ An example of this has been mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 115. ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَ لِلذَّاكِرِينَ This is a reminder for those who would remember. The subject or ism maf'ul of this verb is madhkurun. An example of this has been mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Dahr, chapter 76, verse 2. Shay'am madhkura, a thing spoken of. The verbs iddhakara and tadhakara and iddhakara are all synonyms of the verb dhakara, although they are all from different verb patterns. The above verbs all mean he remembered or he became reminded of. The active participle or ism file of the verb dhakkara is mudhakkir. An example of this has been mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah al ghashiyah chapter 88 verse 22. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Admonish, therefore for thou art but an admonisher. The fifth form of this verb, which is the verb dhakara, is tadhakara. This form is called bab tafa'ul, and its use indicates intensity, thoroughness, emphasis, extensiveness, etc. in the meaning. The mudare of this verb is yatadhakaru. An example of this verb has been mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah ar raad Chapter 13, verse 20. Innama yatadhakkaru ulul albab. But only those gifted with understanding will reflect. Something to note over here is that sometimes the ta and the dal in this verb pattern is combined. And the verb is written and read as yadhakkaru. The example of this being used in the Holy Quran is la'allahum yadhakkarun that they might take heed, be admonished, be mindful, become reminded. This has come several times in the Holy Quran. Recap of this verb's meaning. It has a wide range of meanings. It can mean remembrance or presence of a thing in mind, memory, mentioning, telling or relating, praise and glorification of Allah, praying or supplicating, could mean praise or eulogy, dispraise or evil speech, a thing that is current upon the tongue. It can mean fame, renown or reputation, whether a good reputation or a bad one. Eminence, nobility and honor. It also means an exhortation. The analysis of this verb is as follows. This fail mudare, 
which is in the present and or future tense. It is masculine, mudhakkar. It is jam'un, it is plural, and ghaib in the third person. Jazakumullah, ahsan al jaza. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, according to the program, I would be writing Surah Al-A'raf. So, the word Suratun has been written several times in the previous programs, and the focus today will be Al-A'raf. Alif, Lam Alif, Ain, Ra, Alif, and Fa. And together, if we reflect on Surah Al-A'raf, Seen Vaw Murakkab, then Ra Mufrad, mean alone, and then Ta Marbuta, Alif again alone, Lam Alif Murakkab, Ain Ra will be Murakkab combined, Alif standing alone, Mufrad, and Fa as well. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So if we start scene And then, wow. Half dot above, and then And then Ra. Basically, I think something. Yeah, this was missing. And then, Hiliatul one dot. And from here, This Suratul and Al Araf. Uh, 
كان ألف from here And then I And this is and if I say And then four. So this is Surah Al-Araf and now some
العرف ناو This is Surah Al-Araf, now Mizan will be This is one and half, and that will be two. And from here to it will be three. And three inside is four. And then this is already two and half, and that will be six. Six inside one, and this already done that. So I think this surah has many times. This is seven, Alif. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven approximately, because it was. And then it will be here, two. And that up to here is three. One, two, and three. Inside also three. One, two, three. And uh, if you, this, that will be one. Inside two, two. This will be one out. All together up is three, one, two and three and that's one and that should be six so if I take that one two three four five six inside two this is one and two And similarly, one, two, and three, three and a half. This again seven. So it will be from here one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This far. Again, like wow, this will be two. Inside is one, and all together, see, all together is six. One, two, three, four, five, and that is exactly six. And its depth is one. Again, from here, like ba is one. This and that and then this is circle okay so this is suratul araf so ayn from here if we this line to 
this line you know starting from here it's be four three inside top and from one two three four so this is suratul araf and ayn ra could be written as well in different forms and let me and this is four as i told you in the beginning this one four one two three and four okay this one a bit down and this will also be to top and width as well so basically two 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 and then surat and in between is bigger and then smaller so that is suratul araf That is sort of now if a big column as I mentioned this ayn ra could be written in differently so in this case uh, if we take or maybe black this is raw And from here, Isra. So again, inside it will be two, like I told you before, one and two around that one and from here one and from here basically one and on it will be three one two and three and this is again small and uh, this is one and half sometime one and then it is again you know inside two and half or maybe three and that could be six five and six okay so that will be again from here One, two, and three, and this. Will be. So this is uh, again this way, 
and uh, ayn ra could also be written this way this row as well so inside is 4 4 and uh, this is again 2 1 from here it will be 4 3 and 4 be out bit because it will be Four and on on top three inside small okay and this and half this is half and uh, then far so this is higher off so raw this is again there are three forms of raw one is inshallah that will be done differently so in this case suratul araf alif lam alif inside three dots these are three and uh, fa six inside Yes, total is three. Three. And these are two. Two. And one in this one. One inside. So here basically uh, this one 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 so one one and one and these are six so this is Surah al -Araf. Now, could you please write Suratul Araf and the previous surah's name and send us your uh, composition and inshallah it will be reviewed in the next. I forgot to re review another piece of composition. Ahlam wa sahlam wa marhaba. Inshallah in next. Assalamu alaikum.